Hey traders, checking into the stock market today. So a bit of weakness in the overnight session coming out of the weekend and a couple headlines that we need to talk about. And then we'll look at where we stand on the charts, bigger picture. I'm starting to develop a little bit of a short-term bullish lean. Had a really good trading day today. We'll go over that and we'll look at some charts. So let's talk headlines first. I just want to reiterate a point that I made on the live stream this morning. And for me, what matters with a headline is how much of this is known information, how much is already priced in, and what are the probabilities? Because probabilities and priced in are the same thing for me. If something is highly probable, prob probable, it is mostly priced in. If something is not probable, it is not priced in. So first, let's get rid of the COVID headlines. So we know that COVID headlines over the weekend, this many cases, this country, this, this, this. As far as I'm concerned, I haven't seen any new information in these headlines in the last couple of weeks. We essentially had the initial headline for new information. Hey, there's this new strain. It's highly transmissible and it's in this country. And now we got our first case in Japan. Okay, new information, need to price that in. From there, anybody with logic and foresight, and this is coming from an individual that is a trader that is only half paying attention to these headlines, knows that we're going to see U.S. cases. We're going to see headlines about U.S. cases. We're going to see increased cases. We're going to see it spread everywhere, and it's going to be the new thing because it's highly transmissible, and it's showing up in all these countries. So as soon as that original headline comes out, you can look forward and say, what is the most probable scenario from here? And we are seeing over the last two weeks the most probable scenario play out. There's no new information as far as, oh, there's a higher death toll and this is more serious. You get a lot of back and forth headlines if you go digging that say it is and that say it isn't. But as far as the trajectory of what we've seen play out in the last week plus, you know, over this past weekend, no new information, just the most probable scenario playing out. So as far as I'm concerned, that doesn't really mean anything to me. And over the weekend, no new information. So I had that point this morning. And of course, the travel names did really well today as far as their bounces. So why would our travel names have solid bounces and be some of the biggest bouncers today if there were really significant new information? Because there isn't no any, there is no new information. Okay, that's out of the way. Next one, the one that does need to be priced in is Biden's BBB bill failing, so to speak. So Senator, what's his name? is now no longer supporting it. And that was a big surprise. And just reading information about it, you could see the words were used abruptly, shocked. These are words that are showing us that the most probable scenario of this bill getting through maybe 48 hours ago was turned upside down with this new information. The market has to price that in. So travel names went up today on headlines that are mostly known. And what names went down today? EV showed relative weakness. And the solar sector was crushed today because this BBB bill being ripped away is new information that needs to be priced into those sectors. And so that's what we see. So that is how I view headlines. How much of this is known information and what is the probability of any of the scenarios that are outlined? So the S&P 500 today started with a lot of weakness and we ended up getting a bounce going, but into tomorrow, we know we need hourly trends to change to the bulls. So here on the futures chart, we got our double top at the all time high, and we're currently holding the fear low. We know that fear low is very important, and it's possible we've got eight trading days left in the year. It's possible that we just trade around within this range, chop around a bit, and we have to wait until next year for resolution. So keeping that in mind, you can see SPY again, bullish candle on the daily, but no hourly trend change yet. So depending on how we open tomorrow, if we open higher, Bears are going to be scouting consolidation because we have not changed the hourly trend yet. If we open lower, bulls are going to look for a bottom fishing play to try and set up the hourly high or low to confirm that trend change to the bulls for daily bounce to get follow through. And then, of course, there's lots of space for a daily lower high to be the result of the next bounce. Hourly trend changes must confirm tomorrow for bulls to prove follow through. QQQ, NASDAQ has been weaker. Here's the futures chart. We broke the fear low today, but there's no follow through. Looking at it on QQQ, again, dividend distribution have to be adjusting here on both SPY and these other ETFs that start to distribute their dividends, but 378.90 broke with no bear follow through. And I can't say no bear follow through yet. I can say at the moment there's no bear follow through, but what if we have a big red day tomorrow? That's follow through. 
If we change the hourly trend to the bulls tomorrow from here, again, if we open higher, bears are going to be aggressive in the morning for the hourly consolidation. And if we open lower, the bulls are going to try for the bottom fish, but we need the hourly trend change. If you confirm an hourly trend change, then I'll say, okay, daily bounce underway. Anything under 398.48 is just a daily lower high, but that is a bear break with zero follow through into that bounce. Semiconductors also broke support. SMH did broke support. At the moment, there's no follow through. Bulls need the hourly trend change back in their favor. We hit the low of the day, midday, solid bounce into the close. MU with bullish earnings reaction, big time help for the sector. Well, we'll see. Big time help for MU. So MU looking at 89.05 is the recent high, and that's back into play for the potential of a weekly bull flag. AMD also stands out as a bit stronger. Daily higher low trying to form on AMD. Aggressive swing bulls are making entries, playing off of 130 support, hoping for an inverse head and shoulders to shape up. But semiconductors similar to QQQ. NVDA, we got this four-hour downtrending support line we're keeping an eye on. And we got a bear break today by a dollar with no follow-through. So again, I'm seeing a little bit of bear exhaustion out there, which has me keeping an eye out in the other direction. Another name, Amazon bear break with zero follow-through. So the fear low breaks straight into a big bounce, and now we're holding that low. Just bears unable to drive it home. And we know Tesla had that falling pattern, but... Today, we're breaking that downtrending support line. And in my opinion, that is due to the EV space seeing relative weakness. They had a bearish correlation to QQQ today. And in my opinion, that's due to the BBB bill and Biden, the BBB Biden bill. So what I'm looking for on Tesla now is daily oversold conditions. If we get further downside, next support is 855. But if we look at NIO, NIO hit a new fresh low after a big time bounce on Friday. LCID was red today, ended up with an inside bar. But look at the solar sector, just huge drop today. From the close on Friday, we closed down 6%. That is the market pricing in new information. And again, all of our travel names bouncing because there's nothing new to price in. Yes, you can say they opened lower because of some fear headlines, but the Contrarian trader says, those are not new headlines. That was the most likely scenario. I'm looking to buy that dip. Healthcare, daily consolidation underway. Hourly oversold conditions. We got real close, got down to an hourly RSI of about 32. Bounced right off daily EMA 12. And now the question is, can the bulls confirm an hourly trend change back in their favor tomorrow to set that healthy daily higher low after that massive run? Look at the stair-step pattern. Stair-step pattern broke bare at 137.81. And that bear got a good bit of follow through. Look at Netflix today. Netflix, five minute stair step pattern all morning. Massive ripper, higher low every candle. That pattern breaks at 605, 650 cents. And that's the high of the day. Stair step patterns are great visual guides when things are extended to try and help us get that timing down for a top. XLF, fear low broke, no follow through at the moment. Again, we need the hourly trend change. So we need to set an hourly higher low and higher high tomorrow. But if we get a green day tomorrow, it's a bear break with no follow through. There's tons of space for a daily lower high to form on this next bounce. But again, it's just everybody seeing bear breaks with a lack of follow through. And whenever I see that happen, I usually scout falling wedges. I don't see any falling wedge to draw on a pattern like this, but again, it just shows me a bit of potential bear exhaustion in the short term. Still lots of space for daily lower highs to be the result of these next bounces that we see on lots of names, but I am keeping an eye out for bounces. IWM is another reason. Again, we know it's a risk off environment recently, but look at the bear breaks. Fear low breaks by a dollar straight into a bounce. That low then breaks by less than a dollar into a solid bounce Friday. And today it breaks by a dollar fifty straight into a bounce. So bears are starting to lack follow through for our time frame. We can draw a downtrending support line on IWM. Tightening range to be watching. Hourly trend change needed. 
I will be watching for an hourly high or low entry on IWM tomorrow. And then the bulls must confirm the trend change to get the daily bounce going. And it's just another name with a lot of space for a potential lower high to form. But I am scouting a short-term shift to the bulls. And if I'm wrong, I will make hourly higher low attempts that will not form. And I'll stop out if lows of today break. It all depends on how we open tomorrow as far as how I position for that hourly higher low. But I know heading into tomorrow, I'm scouting an hourly higher low entry on IWM. I've had a lot of success trading XBI the last two days. Bought the dip on Friday. Definitely sold way too early. But with that massive move, you can still sell way too early and have a big win. And I traded it today. I'll go over my trades here at the end of the video. And I'll go over a step-by-step -step of everything that I was watching at different times. But look at this volatility. Three days, the ETFs, the leveraged ETFs, 25, 27% bounce. Then a four-day pullback, 25% pullback. Then a four-day bounce, 25% bounce. So much volatility, a trader's dream. I'm going to be trading the biotech sector more. Already the last two days, I've traded XBI more dollar volume than probably in the last two months. And I've had a bull lean because it's been showing me a bullish correlation with IWM. And it continues to have that bullish correlation. Look at the volume. You could say, hey, well, Friday was quad witching. That's why there's volume. Yeah, for Friday. But look at the monthly volume. We've got nine trading days left in the month. And we are currently, with nine trading days left, we are at the second highest volume month in 20 months. Potentially going to be the highest. That stands out to me. And the bullish correlation stands out. We hit our low back on Wednesday. Every other sector has dropped to a lower low since then. Dollar, still tightening up. Four-hour equilibrium. We've got our high, low, lower high, higher low. If we break bull, we look up to our double top at the all-time, not the all-time high, the high of the bounce. If we break bear, we look to our daily support double bottom. But again, if you are bullish, you want these bear breaks. If you're bullish stocks, crypto, commodities, anything, you want these bear breaks. This bear break. Metals are trying to set a daily high or low to set up a daily trend change. Natural gas is nice and tight on the daily. Double bottom. Bulls must break the lower high resistances to get a weekly bounce going in natural gas. Starting to scout uranium names again. Look at the bounce on uranium. So again, the setup, CCJ. I'm scouting a monthly high or low. Anything above 1530. Tons of space. Monthly high or low, very likely. Weekly. Stair step drop. Lower high every single week, five weeks in a row. This is the sixth week. Daily. Drop to a lower low, but again, starting to see a lack of follow through. Here's your bear break straight into a bounce. Now there's a bear break. Is it going to go straight into a bounce again? There's a big bounce today on the hourly. I can be as an aggressive bull scouting an hourly higher low entry using $20 as a stop on any bounce follow through. If we confirm an hourly trend change, anything under 22.96 is just a daily low or high. But again, starting to get interested in names that are showing me bear breaks with a lack of follow through as I scout for bear exhaustion. So keeping an eye on CCJ and IWM for hourly higher lows tomorrow. We'll see how pre-market shapes it up. I'm also gonna be watching Bitcoin for clues for risk on or risk off. Bitcoin's getting real tight. Volatility's coming this week. Look at the daily here. Bear breaks, it's starting to lack some follow through. We just double bottomed. Can we break resistance? All these little clues. I'm watching IWM and Bitcoin and crypto for clues that the risk off mindset from the last few weeks is shifting a bit. All right, so my trading heading into today. Pre-market game plan. I'm scouting XBI for an hourly high or low. Why? Look how much space we have to work with. Yes, everything's opening lower, but look at how much space we have to work with. Even if everything opens lower and drops, XBI still has 3% of space above the low of Friday. Hourly high or low compared to the low of Friday is the most likely scenario. Scouting an hourly high or low in XBI, I'm scouting a QQQ hourly lower high. Why? Because I'm viewing anything under the high of Friday's bounce attempt as an hourly lower high. Whether that bounce happens first thing in the morning or not, that's what I'm scouting. 
hourly low or high on QQQ. So I have two different directions that I'm watching on two different ETFs. So first things first, I was not planning on trading in the first 15 minutes, 20 minutes, but XBI dumped. So I know I'm scouting an hourly high or low and the five minute RSI is in the low twenties. Good enough for me. Great, initial entry, I'm in. And I had a good entry. Guess I should show you, have it up from earlier. This is just my first trade. I made a bunch of trades in LABU, in LABD today. Not LABD, just LABU today. But entered 36.59. That's a real good entry because the low of the day was 36.21. So just good timing entering right here. And I was very quickly in profit. So I had very little to worry about as far as, okay, where's my second entry going to be? I made a first entry. I would have made one more if that five minute RSI dropped down into the teens, but didn't have to think about that because the bounce got going right away. And knowing that I'm trading counter short term momentum, I am locking in some gains quickly. I sold one third, wait a little bit, sold another third. So I'm down to one third position. I just locked in a day maker. So if I stop out break even on my last one third position, I got my day maker. From there, we formed a very clear five minute equilibrium. I explained during the live stream, if I were looking to be aggressive, I would re-enter my entire position on a bull break of this five minute equilibrium. Into the end of the year, I am not attempting to be aggressive, so I did not make that trade, but that would have worked out. Re-enter everything on a break of 38.22. There's a nice little 3% move of follow through. And then just would have, again, if I'm going back full again, as soon as the bull break takes place, I'm starting to scale out some partial positions just to keep locking in those gains. So from there, I saw this pullback. Actually, I got to make sure what time did I enter my other trade on QQQ? 10.15. So at that point in time on XBI, I'm just letting my one third position ride and I learned my lesson because I didn't let any position ride on Thursday. I was exiting the entire thing on this initial move up and I missed a monster day. You know, I missed a, if I didn't do, if I just bought and held, I would have seen a month maker. Instead, it was a handful of day maker, which I'll take. Again, it was counter trend. I'm certainly not gonna anticipate that the entire ETF is gonna go plus 6% counter trend. So I don't get too beat up on myself about that. So at that point in time, all right. So I'm in XBI, one third position long. I see QQQ, I see a very clear top fishing play. Why? Look at the size of this pullback. On the size of this pullback, I say, okay, that's a lot of space. We did hold the low of the day, but I'm scouting a five minute lower high compared to the high of the day due to the size of that pullback. So I enter bearish, I enter SQQQ on this bounce. My stop goes over the high of the day. We then tighten up and roll over. So I now have a bearish SQQQ position that is profitable and a bullish LABU position that I can't lose on. So I've got exposure in both directions that I'm very comfortable in. From there, it's back to XBI. And XBI saw this pullback and said, meh, I don't like the size of that five minute consolidation. I'm anticipating a lower high is going to be the most likely scenario next time we bounce. So I exited my last third of LABU right about there. I then recognized, hey, this is another equilibrium. I'm buying back in, back in my third on this pullback using 113.60 as a stop. At that point in time, I've now got a clear stop level to use. We got our bull break, still in my one third. Essentially all I did with that little shuffle of a sell and a rebuy is make a re-entry a little bit cheaper, probably maybe like a 15% day maker cheaper and just a bit closer to my stop. So risk and reward a little bit more favorable. A little bit of micromanaging, but just recognize the equilibrium, so jump back in. And on this pullback, again, didn't like the size of this pullback. I think I might've exited the entire position. At some point here on this move up. And the reason again was we were still under the high of Friday at that point. And I was in profit taking mode at that point in the day because I'm up over a three day maker. I'm looking to be conservative here in December. And it was a great start to the week. And so I'm in profit taking mode because I know I want to be mostly flat by the end of the day. So I'm just taking profit. And if I make any mistakes, it'll be leaving money on the table, but I'm not giving back any of this three day maker. And so I exited the last of X or of LABU at some point here into the end of the day. 
and done with it from there. SQQQ. From there, I recognized QQQ was a two minute falling wedge forming. Why? Because we hit a new low of the day without much follow through. So as soon as that happened, I draw this trend line. And the first recognition that I had of this falling wedge was right here. And I say, if this bear breaks has a, has a lack of follow through, this is a potential two minute falling wedge. I start scaling out of SQQQ. Why? Because if I'm wrong, we flush down and I leave money on the table. And if I don't do anything, I can give my profit back on the day. And again, at that point, I'm staring a three day maker in the face and I want to keep it locking it in. So I sold half of my position before the bull break ever took place. We then knew that we were just looking for a 15 minute lower high to be the result of that wedge bull break, which we got lower high set back to the low of the day test, low of the day held. And on this 15 minute bull break, I exited another 25% of my position. And then at the end of the day, I started nibbling back a little bit of what I had sold as a, a bit of a protective overnight position to offset SPY long-term no touch a bit. So I do have a little bit of SQQ overnight, nothing that's gonna be make or break no matter how we open tomorrow, higher or lower, but recognize the falling wedge and took profit into it. And that is most of what I did today. I did make one TLRY bottom fish attempt when QQQ was that two minute falling wedge but stopped out with a tiny loss here. And that was that. One thing that was notable, I felt really in the zone, really just clicking on all cylinders and playing bullish and bearish at the same time and everything was a green position. And I recognized, I feel really in the zone. This seems almost too easy. And as soon as I have that thought, that instantly translates to, don't give back your profit, you fool, being overconfident. So again, I have to observe what my brain is thinking. And to do so, I'm literally zoomed out and just analyzing the thoughts that are going through my head. Because oftentimes I will think one thing, and for me, through experience of many years, it instantly triggers a second thought that is completely unrelated, but that I have learned. You know, if I feel FOMO, I've learned, don't trade. If I feel this is too easy, I've learned, don't be overconfident and give back your gains. So I have this, this trained thought process where if I see, if I think a certain thought, I know through history, hey, you've thought this in times in the past and then you get a big red loss. So don't do that this time. I think that's all I got. Ended up being a three and a half day maker and mostly flat heading into tomorrow. We'll see what the bulls or bears give us and I'll be watching. I know I'm interested in IWM and CCJ to try and set up those hourly trend changes, but we have to see what pre-market gives us. I hope you're well. Hope you had a good weekend. Three more trading days this week. Keep that in mind if you are a weekly options trader. And we'll see you tomorrow. So we got a lot of pictures this time around. One of the highlights of the trip. So when I was at the Conundrum Hot Springs from last time around, people suggested going to Ice Lake Basin. And I said, sure, why not? I got nothing better to do. So headed that way, just some more campsites along the way leaving some footprints and some towns. This is Ure and Silverton that I was going past. Just some really cool, small little towns nestled in the heart of some huge mountains with some really cool roads going through them. And there's so many pull-offs and so many views. It's hard to stay concentrated when you are new to Colorado and it's just these massive scenic views all around. There's some really cool colors on these mountains. Obviously, it doesn't do it justice here, but different minerals eroding away in red and yellow and brown and orange. There's another little cute town from above. So this is the hike up to Ice Lake Basin, and I was pretty beat up that day. I forget why. It wasn't too brutal of a hike. It was pretty steep. Had a big pack on, had a big water jug and all that, but... I got to this point, which is pretty much there's two levels. There's one level up and then there's another one. And I saw tents over here and I thought, hmm, this is a nice spot, cool mountain, little lake. Maybe I'll just pitch my tent here for the night. And I said, no, I'll keep going up. It might be worth it. And it certainly was one of the best spots that 
I went to on the entire road trip just in terms of, you know, astounding beauty. And a fun aside is this has been the background of my computer for the last, see, I'm not lying, for the last three years. And my previous partner went over her house one day and the background of her computer is pretty much this exact picture, but from maybe 50, 100 feet to the right and in the winter exact same place. It was from her trip to Ice Lake Basin. So that was some pretty cool synergy. But there was a, a marmot who lived there, some nice wildflowers. The wildflowers were mind blowing, as you can see. Just again, so much more than I anticipated would be in a pretty arid environment that is Colorado, but just lush wildflowers at the right time of year. And this was the uh, you know surround sound or surround view panoramic view all around that's my favorite camping spot sweet picture did have a thunderstorm roll up out of nowhere that's the danger this is up over the tree line over eleven thousand feet up i think it was somewhere around i forget between 11 and 12 but a storm came out of nowhere from behind this ridge and dropped a little bit of snow a little bit of hail that very quickly melted but just in terms of the speed that it came over with no warning, but you can't see the clouds on the other side. So that was definitely a wake up call to be more attentive. This was a rock that a marmot lived under and that's just his life. This is what he looks at every single day. The rock is pretty much right where I'm standing. And that I that was blowing my mind that that's just all he knows. That's, just, that's outside for him. Pretty good luck out in terms of where that dude found to live. So this is now, Pretty much, I stayed for two days and my agenda was, I wonder what this looks like from that mountaintop or that mountaintop. So this is me exploring right here, this little river that's feeding, or this creek feeding the runoff into this extremely mineral rich, that's why it's this color. Ice cold, did dive in, but only you can only stay in there for you know a minute or two. But ended up hiking up into that little crevice to see where it went and there was some cool snow melting and some, again, the, the white rocks of the minerals running off of the mountains and some cool sculptures of snow. And that's one of the views from above. And you can see it's just valleys down there below. That's where you hike up. And that's the river that I climbed up. And then you can see it going down even further. That's where my picture was and where I took, where I put my tent up. And again, it's the kind of thing where I was alone in this place, the vast majority. There were two women that camped a bit further up. And other than that, I had this entire place to myself. This is from another peak. So that last picture was from up here. And then this is from a completely different angle. And it's a good spot. You should go to Ice Lake, Ice Lake Basin in Colorado. And that's the view back down the valley from where we hiked up, where I hiked up. And I had something, I got all poetic up there. And I, I do a thing where I associate music with memories. So I have a really good memory in terms of memorizing things in school and memorizing lyrics of songs. So what I'll do is I'll be in a moment and I'll suck in that moment as much as I can while I'm playing music. And I associate that memory and the sense and all my senses with that song. And so for this song or for this memory, I was sitting up there at sunset and I was playing Fool on the Hill. And so now anytime that I hear Fool on the Hill by the Beatles, I'm taken right back to this spot and it's a very vivid memory for me. And I do that with a lot of songs and a lot of places that I go. So potentially something you can play with yourself, but it's really good for memory recognition for me to have an audio trigger almost to bring me back into that moment. I got poetic and I wrote something about religion and I'll see if I can find it. I'll be right back. I can't find it, but I recreated it for this post a while ago. Some of the similar themes. Anyways, that's that. That's Ice Lake Basin, Colorado. Go to it and we'll see you tomorrow.